not tell the truth. To get to the truth, you got to ask questions. Uh, if we want to know whether or not there's life on Mars, we have to ask questions. Uh, you have to. You can have a hypothesis, but that's not quite the same as a belief. A hypothesis that there's life on Mars, hey, you can't Mike, really that, say that you believe it. That will not make it so. You can say that you believe that humans could not affect the climate of the Earth, but if you ask, start asking questions, you will find that they do. We do. Well, Bill, there's, we have a picture up here which has to do also with a story from your book, which has to do with about being a little bit too accepting of lines that are told to you. Can you see this, what's in front of us here? Uh, the octopus, the tree octopus. Yes. yes, the tree octopus. This looks like the the, uh, the uh, vineyard octopus, but sure. <laughs> yeah. So what's anyway, the this is a famous hoax. It's just fantastic. There's no such thing as the tree octopus. So there's a website, right, with a very, an endangered tree octopus, and what does it ask you to do? Yes, you save the tree save octopus, the tree. but there's no such thing. So let's... Let's uh, see if there are any questions here. Actually, let's. Who, who's got a question for Bill? Anyone uh, give money to save the tree octopus? Don't give money to save the tree octopus, you guys. That's a hilarious comedy gag. But it is great. It's a fabulous teaching tool. Lisa, who do we have so, here with a question? Uh, we've a got Justin. Justin, if you unmute yourself, you can go ahead and ask uh, Bill your question. Hi, Bill. This question is regarding a little bit earlier about the advancement of space in supporting it. How do you feel about SpaceX and um, SpaceX, sorry, and them continuing um, the automated space travel and reentry back to the atmosphere? Did you ask about SpaceX and space uh, ethics both? So no, the question SpaceX. was, how do you feel about automated space travel and SpaceX? Well, it's great. Well, we, you know, you guys, we do extraordinary things in space with artificial intelligence and automated devices, automated spacecraft. We have two rovers on Mars that are still roving, Curiosity and Opportunity, and they make decisions for draw, how where they're going to go continually, autonomously. Uh, what you want is to be able to resupply the International Space Station uh, robotically. It's all good. That way humans don't have to do it. So uh, as we get better and better at it, the thing to remember about uh, space exploration and aut automating space exploration, when you see a spacecraft come up to the space station or to rendezvous with another spacecraft, they're going seven miles a second. <laughs> I mean, it looks like they're moving very slowly, but they're moving at extraordinary speeds. and managing those speeds to within just a few centimeters a second takes uh, a lot of a lot of software a lot of mathematics a lot of understanding so um so i'm a big fan i guess is the answer i'm a big fan of space exploration automated well, or autonomous space exploration okay um i think also you've got we have another photo up here which has to do with your uh interest in space looks like a light sail tell us about the planetary society and about your space probes that you're you've launched so uh the light sail spacecraft was a vision over a century ago people realized that light has momentum even though it has no mass and uh so what you can do if you have a low, low enough mass spacecraft in space, uh, you can get sunlight to push it. It's really an extraordinary idea. And when I was in college, my old professor Carl Sagan talked about this technology, and he wanted to have a spacecraft that would catch up with Comet Holly, what some people, what we used to call Halley's Comet. But they found some people from the Holly family, and they say Holly, not Halley. Anyway, uh, but it got that mission got canceled in exchange for the uh, for the uh, space shuttle program, and so uh, this Carl Sagan started <clears throat> the planetary site in 1980. I'm a charter member, and uh, we wanted to fulfill his dream, so it took. 39 years, but we built the spacecraft to the new standard that's emerged in space exploration called a CubeSat. A 
cubicle satellite. And uh, it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 30 centimeters, literally smaller than a loaf of bread, people. And thanks to you all, Kickstarter supporters, we got it in space, and uh, we've got a push, and we're going to fly Light Sail 2 in the coming months. We're on a SpaceX rocket called the Falcon Heavy, which does not quite exist yet. But it will, and we are on the second flight. They're required to do one flight to prove it works. Yep. Then we'll do another. On the second flight, we're on the manifest. And so we, thanks to Kickstart support, this little box deploys these enormous, super, super thin, super shiny sails on very stiff cobalt steel booms. It's, um, it's very much like a tape measure, four of them. And they come out of this really cool Swiss watch gear drive movement. And uh, the sunlight pushes the spacecraft. It twists. There's no shortage of electricity. We have solar cells mounted on the cube. And it twists in space using um, gyroscopic momentum, uh, angular momentum. Excuse me. It Excuse twists me, in Bill. space, presents its sail to the sun. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I think people, we have only about 10 more minutes. Please. I think people yeah, can great. go to the Planetary Society website and read about the solar sail project. Yes, But a, yes. Quick, a quick question here from Wade in Atlanta. How can we deal with climate deniers and skeptics? Well, we have uh, things like this. Climate, the word skeptic, everybody, is near and dear to me. You know, I'm, I, I consider myself a noble skeptic. This is to say if some says she or he has psychic powers, I'm very skeptical of that. If someone says his head expands, expands to the edge of the universe and collapses again instantly, too fast for me to see, I'm very skeptical. If somebody says he can walk on fire because he's mentally prepared instead of because of physics, I'm very skeptical. So the climate change deniers have tried to use the word skeptic to, uh, to say that they are being scientific thinkers with respect to the evidence of climate change and they're skeptical until proven until it's proven valid well they're they're way late it's uh, climate change has been proven overwhelmingly so the biggest thing i think is to wait for climate change deniers to age out <laughs> it's going to be a close call uh, for humankind Millennials and younger people are all very concerned about climate change. It's only old people, not only, almost exclusively old people who are, who are in denial about climate change. Okay. So uh, what we want to do is vote, 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 so that we get people in office who embrace the problem and deal with it. Okay. The big thing we want, renewable electricity, clean water, access to the internet for everybody in the world. We got a lot of hands up. Lisa, can we get another question in quickly? We've got Claire here. Claire, go ahead and ask your question. Please unmute. Hi there. Um, I was just, what, when you were talking about skeptical, um, well, I'm psychic. And uh, a couple of years ago, um, me and my partner were in just dire straits we had no money nothing and then two weeks later after i've been told by this who i've been told by who passed on we'd won eighteen thousand pounds and i got a full-time job um i don't know what do you think to that so you're that saying psychic gave you two thousand pounds no you're saying it was cause and effect that meeting the psychic enabled you to get two thousand pounds no, 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 no. I'm a, I am a psychic myself. Oh, you are a psychic. So you you make good yeah. money, right? Okay, no, 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 no. Because believe you no. have superpowers. Okay, well, no. let's... I mean, if you, then... Look, if you're making a living as a psychic, uh, that's good for you. I don't think you have any special powers other than when someone comes into your office, you probably size them up very well. You have a lot of experience with human problems, and you tell them, based on what they tell you, you're able to tell them what they want to hear so they feel better. So that's that's great. Well, thank you. But I am very skeptical that we could design an experiment that would prove that you have supernatural abilities beyond David's or mine. 
So let's move. Thanks a lot, Claire, for that question. Let's move on. Maybe time for one more question, Lisa. So we have uh, Big Man Steve. Big Man Steve, please unmute yourself. You have a few moments. Okay, Big Man, I'm going to give you one um, second. Uh, Mr. Mai, I was wondering when you said about climate change, is it, is it reversible or is it just something we can slow down? Uh, I don't think climate change is reversible for you and me. This is to say it took centuries to put all this uh, greenhouse gas, after greenhouse gas, especially carbon dioxide, in the atmosphere. It's very difficult to remove that. Instead, we want to control or mitigate its effects. It's the uh, old analogy. If you have a roast in the oven, you have a, a large piece of meat in the oven. Take it out of the oven, it keeps cooking. The heat keeps being transmitted from the outside to the inside. There's no stopping that. Okay. It's an analogy, but it's uh, a, something to think about with respect to the earth. Uh, mm, there's a certain amount of warming that we cannot reverse. It's, just, it's baked in, if you will. So instead, we want to get to work and uh, provide renewable electricity and stop pumping any more greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Stop bleaching stable? coral reefs, as we see here. Well, let me, we're running out of time. Let's see if it's, we're not going to get to all the principles. Let's go to the last one, which is be optimistic, be responsible, be persistent, which sounds like great advice for just yes. about everybody. Yes. Uh, if you're not optimistic, you won't get anything done. If you don't think you can accomplish something, you will not accomplish it. So get out there and do it, everybody. If you don't think, uh, if at first it doesn't work, you've heard this many, many times, persist, keep going. Because uh, everybody who's been successful at anything will say, will tell you that we almost didn't make it. it I was going to give up. I was about to quit when such and such happened. And I think it's true of climate change, it's true of, of raising standard of living of women and girls, it's true of clean water, it's true of renewable electricity for everyone. If we don't believe we can do it, we won't do it. Okay. All right, I think we're out of time. Thank you very much. Let's all give Bill a big a big hand, thank a big emoji hand thank for being you. here in all space with us today. Where do I thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you. you can Where use your I emoji <laughs> smile. Thank you, thank so you. So you can check out Bill's new book, cool. Everything All at Once, and I hope you'll uh, come visit us at NBC News Mock, which is nbcnews.com slash M-A-C-H, and uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook again. I'm David Freeman. Thanks very much for joining us this afternoon, and see you next time in Mock and VR. Thank you very much, you guys. I fucking love you.